Do you feel the food animal shortage of veterinarians can be solved? I think so. Again, with the advent of uh, chemical restraint uh, and anesthetics the way they are, you don't have to be a burly 200-pound guy wrestling down this. When I went to school, we, I was taught the Georgia body tie. You know what the Georgia body tie is? No, this is uh, this in the in the old days. Uh, this is the way you restrained a, a huge cow. You did this, loop these ropes over the cow, and you're able to pull it to the ground using pressure points. Uh, precursor, of, maybe I was just smarter. We were just precursor of uh, acupressure, uh, but you had to have some strength to be able to you know hang on to these horses and these cattle and stuff. But nowadays, with chemical uh, uh, restraint, uh, a small 110 pound woman could easily take care of these animals. And so I, I think that will open things up. Uh, there are going to be a lot. I've talked to a lot of uh, men and women in my home state that are interested in food animal medicine. Uh, they want to be able to earn a fair rate of return. Does that sound familiar? Like with our medical professionals, it's tough to get out of med school after all the loans. Veterinary education is extremely expensive. So uh, to be able to afford to go into food animal medicine, which is usually not as remunerative as the, as the small animal field, uh, we've got to work hard to make sure uh, that we support veterinary education, keep those costs down. But students are very interested in that, and we give loan forgiveness provisions for practicing in rural areas, uh, taking public service jobs. Uh, I think there's a, a great opportunity for uh, food animal medicine to, to blossom once again.